Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a common for loop exercise. Let's look at an example of how we can use for loops. One common problem that you might use a for loop for is helping to keep a running tally of something. This slide shows what a for loop might look like. Here's an example of a for loop used to sum the numbers from 0 through 100. OK, let's go ahead and explore this in the editor. OK, so let's take a look at how we can sum our variables in the editor here. So we're going to start at a min and go to a max that we're specifying as constants. Um, so we have to declare our sum outside of our loop so that, we, uh, so that this value is available after our loop as well. So now we're going to do for i in range, and we're going to start at min, and we're going to go to max. And we'll assume that we're going to increment by 1 each time. OK, and now what we want to do is add to it so we can say sum plus equals i. Remember, i takes on that value each time through the loop. And so we're going to take that value and add it to our sum. Now we're going to use this shortcut here, plus equals. We haven't seen that before. And what it does is it's basically like saying sum equals sum plus i. But since we do that so often, we can use a shortcut, plus equals, and it essentially adds the value of i to our existing value of sum. We can also actually use it with things like times equals or minus equals or divide by equals as well. But here we're going to use plus equals to add to our sum. And that's all we need for our loop. After our loop, we can then print our results. So we can say print the sum is, and we need to cast that to a string, and then print sum. Let's try that. And there we go. And again, we're adding essentially from 1 to 100, but we're not including 100. If I actually want to include 100 in there, I can just add one more there, and I will now sum up to and including 100, and I get a sum of 50-50. So that's how we can use our for loops to help us out.